using black watercolour paint is a bit of a controversial subject among artists. Some artists passionately argue against using black paint in watercolour altogether. They say things like, real artists don't use black. Others happily accept the use of black paint as a convenient ready to go colour. So what should you do and who should you believe? In this video I'll explain everything you need to know about using and mixing black and neutral colours in watercolour painting. We'll look at the arguments for and against using black directly from the tube versus mixing your own blacks. The most common pigments used in black watercolour paint and other neutral colours are probably PBK6 and PBK9. These numbers simply refer to the colour index names of the pigments. You can usually find these written on the paint tubes. All paints have a pigment number like this. The P stands for pigment and the BK stands for black. Black pigments are carbon based. In other words, they come from things like charred bones, soot and charcoal. PBK6 is often referred to as lamp black. It's the most opaque of these black pigments. Lamp black also has a cool bluish undertone. PBK9 is known as ivory black. This pigment is less opaque than lamp black and it has a more of a warm black appearance. Black pigments in general have a high tinting strength. This means they can easily become overpowering when mixed with other paints. Also, black paints are very opaque. As a result, they tend to hide underlying colours when layered on top using a glazing technique. These two characteristics can be a disadvantage. The high tinting strength and lack of transparency can cause black paint to appear dominant and overwhelming compared to other colours in your painting. Whenever you want to add shading and shadows or to darken a colour in your palette, it's a natural instinct to want to use black. After all, if a colour isn't dark enough, just add black, right? But actually, a lot of traditional watercolour artists do not use pure black paints, preferring to mix dark colours by combining the other hues in their palette. A common complaint with pure black paints is that they tend to modify the original hue in a rather unnatural and harsh way, and that they don't harmonise well with the other colours in the painting. But what exactly does this mean? Take this example with the colour yellow. I started out by painting with pure yellow, then little by little I mixed in some lamp black to produce a gradient of colour from light to dark. In the next example I again started with pure yellow, then I darkened the yellow paint by mixing in some purple. For those of you who are not familiar with colour mixing theory, purple is the complement of yellow. Complementary colours are any colours on opposite sides of the colour wheel, and when mixed together they create a neutral grey or brown appearance. They are said to neutralise each other. This time the resulting gradient produces a more harmonious looking transition in tonal value from light to dark. Here's another example. Say that I wanted to paint this bowl of lemons. What do you think would be the best mixture of colours to produce a natural and harmonious range of hues and tonal values? Mixing yellow with black or mixing yellow with complementary hues? When you sample the actual colours from the photo, you can see that the shading and the shadows are made up of a range of warm oranges and browns. Even the darkest part of the shadows is a dark chocolate colour and not black. So it appears that mixing yellow with complementaries would give rise to a more compatible range of colours. This is one of the reasons why a lot of artists prefer shading with complements rather than pure black paints. This is not to say that black pigments should be avoided at all costs. I know a number of artists who use convenience mixtures which contain black pigments like PBK6 and PBK9. Neutral tints, Payne's Grey, Indigo and Sepia are all good examples of neutral convenience colours which contain black pigment mixed with other colours. So should you use black in your watercolour paintings? There is no right or wrong choice. If you want to use black just be careful to mix in a small amount at a time. Because of its high tinting strength you don't need much. You can also try mixing your own blacks using other colours to get shades that have more interest or even reproduce the mixes used for convenience paints. For example, Payne's Grey is a mixture of ivory black and French ultramarine. There are however some important advantages to mixing your own colours for dark toned areas of a painting. For a start you get blacks which have more colour variety and interest. You can also harmonise your neutral colours to better match the other colours in your painting. And mixing your own blacks and neutrals also improves your colour mixing skills. So how do you mix your own black watercolours? 
The truth is you can mix perfectly good neutral colours and a darn good interpretation of black by mixing other paints. So before you reach for a tube of black paint, I would encourage you to experiment with mixing your own blacks, greys and neutral colours. I'm going to show you a few simple recipes for mixing your own greys and dark shades. But before we look at that, it's useful to understand the mixing method typically used to neutralise a colour or to make black. And to help us understand the relationships between paint colours and the mixing results that can be achieved, we can use an artist's colour wheel. This colour wheel was painted using three primary paint colours, a yellow, a blue and a red. Mixing together adjacent colours results in the secondary colours, green, purple and orange. When mixed together, the three primary colours make black, or usually some variation of dark grey. So the standard formula for mixing black is to mix together three primary colours. But obviously mixing three paints every time you want black or grey is somewhat complicated and time consuming. And getting a balanced mix of the three primaries takes time to get the desired result. An easier option is to mix together just two paints. In general this can be done by mixing any given colour with a complementary colour on the opposite side of the colour wheel. As mentioned earlier this is known as neutralising a colour. So for example, to neutralise red you can mix it with green, and to neutralise blue you can mix it with orange. But why do dual colour combinations like this work for mixing black? Well if you think about it, orange is the result of mixing the two primaries, yellow and red. So when you mix orange with blue, it's like mixing together three primaries. The same thing goes for green, which is mixed with the primaries yellow and blue. You just need to add red to complete the mixture of three primary colours. And make black. So here are a few examples of some useful mixing recipes for making black or grey. And if you'd like to download a copy of these mixing recipes for future reference, just follow the link below this video. You can produce neutral colours from just about any mixture of blue and orange. This first set of two colour mixtures uses some form of blue and orange based pigments. Two colours that I recommend people have in their palette are French Ultramarine and Burnt Umber. When mixed, they create a colour very close to black, which can be fine-tuned to achieve a warm or cool black as needed. French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna produces a nice cool range of greys and leans towards a purple grey. This colour combination is also known as Jane's Grey, named after the well-known Australian watercolourist Jane Blundell. You can even buy this colour as a ready-to-go convenience mixture from Daniel Smith. Cobalt blue is somewhere between a warm and a cool blue pigment colour. You can combine this with burnt umber or burnt sienna for making warm or cool greys depending on the mixing ratio. Phthalo blue green shade and burnt umber is not quite as neutral as mixing burnt umber with French ultramarine. This green shaded blue results in greys that have a green tinge. Phthalo blue and transparent pile orange both have quite an intense colour appearance. Phthalo blue is a very good complement to transparent orange. Phthalo blue green shade works pretty well, but red shade is even better. As we saw earlier, we can also mix greys using some kind of a combination of green and red. Here are a couple of common examples for you to try out. The combination of phthalo green blue shade and pyrrol scarlet produces a nice warm grey appearance. And in contrast to the previous mixture, Phthalo Green Blue Shade and Kinecodone Rose creates an interesting cool grey colour. Next time you paint, I hope you'll give black colour mixing a try for yourself. Mixing together two complementary pigments gives rise to some wonderful vibrant blacks and greys that contain a hint of other colours and help you achieve a much more lively appearance in your paintings. Don't forget you can download the worksheet for this project by following the link below this video. If you give this project a try for yourself, then let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be alerted whenever I publish something new. Also, if you'd like to receive some free watercolour lessons that I only share with my newsletter subscribers, follow the link underneath this video to sign up.